Hi, I'm Joe Flowers for Quick to Endure, and today we're going to talk about one of the most important tools in U.S. history, in North American history. That is the axe, one of the primary tools used for wood processing. Now, the axe isn't used too much anymore in terms of felling trees, but definitely for splitting wood for camping and for a lot of outdoor use where you can't bring a chainsaw or a powerful splitter around. Back in the old days, it was used by pioneers to carve their way through the frontier and make permanent settlements such as log cabins and a slew of other different shelters, process wood to keep them warm, etc. The farther up north you go, the more important an axe becomes. Now today we're focusing on hatchets, the extremely portable wood processing tool because mostly people out there are using hatchets more than felling axes or splitting axes for your outdoor excursions. We have three different companies right here as examples. This is a Wetterlings. This is my axe I've had the longest. My, uh, I think it's about 10 years old or so. Um, this is Gransford Brooks 19 inch hunting axe. And this is a Condor t knife and tool carpenter's axe slash camping axe. Um, this one has a straight handle. You can see these have a semi curved handle. This one's about 19 inches. This one's about 12 inches. And this is about 15 inches. Um, I'm gonna focus on using this guy since this is smallest and more portable. Um, this is a wildlife hatchet. Uh, you can see it on Equipped Endora. Adam did a great review on it. And we're going to talk about how to split with this guy. How to do some serious splitting. All the different splitting techniques without splitting your kneecap open or splitting your ankle open. Now the hatchet is one of the most dangerous types of axes to use. Why? It doesn't have a longer handle. Instead of coming all the way here with the long handle, you miss and boom, you come right here. With the longer handle, you might have a chance of hitting the dirt first. One of the safety rules that you can start using to, if you're beginning with axes, is to always keep the axe on a vertical plane. If you always keep it here on a vertical plane, instead of bam, just like this, you can be pretty safe. Now there will be some splitting techniques later where we break that rule, but this is a general rule and if you have something in front of you, such as another log, so here's a log right here, you can do this all day long with a different type of log. If there's another piece over here, like this one, and you want to chop it, you can use this as a safety log. Two different ways of being safe. One, don't, bring the vertical, don't break the vertical plane. Two, use a safety log. Okay, let's get into splitting. Before we get started, make sure to go check out the Quip to Endure How to Baton video because I'll tell you kind of what I'm doing here. I'm not trying just busting through the middle because as you can see, the log's winning. So I'm going to start along the outside here and bust out little pieces of wood and then maybe I'll get some angles that I can work with. So utilizing the hatchet, we're starting to get a crack here and here. There, there's a piece. Now we got a corner to work with. I'm using this ax kind of like a fulcrum to bend. It's not the best thing for the handle, but it can be done, especially if you're comfortable with replacing a handle, which we'll get into later. I'm not gonna force it. I'm just gonna sit here, use this tiny little ax to get around that little punk piece there and cut. Here's another piece. Doing pretty well. You see how we're not trying to get through the middle of this thing? We're just gonna work our way around it. And believe it or not, this still burns. And I'm trying not to hit the ground too. I've got a whole ton of sawdust on the ground, which actually acts as a little bit of a barrier for hurting my edge. But I wanna be careful not to hit the edge on such a nice, uh, nice ax. It's got a Rockwell, probably the hardest Rockwell of all the uh, axes out there, the Wetterlings does. So you could chip it out pretty easily on here. On the contrary though, it holds an edge like no other. It holds an edge forever. I think I've sharpened this maybe three times. Here's a knot right here. I gotta be careful of. It's gonna twist all of those fibers. So I'll just do my best with what I got. Work all the way around. If I get bored, I'm just gonna flip over to the other side. I'm bored. If you start getting caught up and you're not able to get anywhere such as these things, I'm just gonna flip over and start working the other side. No rule that says you can't do that. There's a big old knot here. Probably don't wanna fool with that. I might be able to get around this angle here, but that's pretty close to that knot. Yep, got it. Ah. 
I don't want to mess with that knot. There's another knot right here. You can see what it's doing. It's kind of pushing the blade out. That's no good. Now you may think a piece of wood such as this may be too big for such a small hatchet to split. But if you go check out the Hat of Baton video and figure out where the radiuses are on this thing, you'll figure out that's not so. So one of the rules I'm probably not going to do is just start whaling through the middle because as you can see the log's winning. All right, Even if I start outwards and move my way towards the middle, I'm not even trying, not even giving it any of my energy because I know it's not going to work. However, if we look at this and try and obey where the wood wants to go in circles and try and hit along those sides, we might be able to chunk some stuff out as long as there aren't knots here. You can see there's a split right here. If you can't, I'll move the camera over more. There's a first split. Ooh, and a Scolopendra centipede. Neato. Okay, there's a first split. This piece of wood, that'll burn. Maybe I'll go right here. Split that out. That'll burn. I'll keep going around. Accuracy is important. Those first two hits that I did, they weren't accurate. So I didn't line right up on here for this thing to buckle. Now, when splitting wood, we're going to start using a trick. We're going to pop out just a little bit right at the end of the cut to see if we can split it. You can see how I'm working around the outside of this and trying to bring it down into smaller sizes, more manageable. That's that trick where you flick out the side. We'll show you that later on. There it is again. Like I said, this is a Wetterling's axe, so you don't want to hit the ground a lot. This is a high, high Rockwell, so it holds an edge for a really, really, really long time. I think they have the highest Rockwell out of all the axes out there, um, so they take a great edge. But uh, you don't want to hit the ground a lot. I've got a lot of sawdust on the ground here, so that takes out some of the brunt of the impact, but I'm trying really hard not to hit the ground. That piece is chunked out, and I'm going to hit this one. Just get them both out, out of the way. All right, now we have a smaller log. We might be able to split along the inside here, but I'm just going to make sure that I got some of this wood out of the way. Here's some more dry wood that you can start on a fire. Good stuff. You can see how doing that maneuver helps keep it from hitting the ground, but it also takes away accuracy. So if I really try hard just to be accurate, you have to work with it, figure out which one you want to use, which technique, blah, blah, blah. Split more wood. Now I'm going to go straight through the middle. Try to go straight through the middle and see if I can get it to bust out that way. Good. Well, it's not exactly straight through the middle. There's an accuracy thing. Um, but it is splitting, so good stuff. Instead of trying too hard, I'm just going to go over to the other side, follow the split, and boop, open that up. There's 
There's no use fighting that when you got a little hatchet. Okay, so we got two big blocks here. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Why don't we just move this over the end? I'm gonna take my thumb, pull it back. That's not gonna prevent injury at all, but it will prevent that a little bit. Maybe the whole part of the, the hand on top of the metacarpals instead of just the top. You wanna be careful when you do this and do it slowly. This is just chunking out kindling. This is pretty dangerous, so unless you're very comfortable with an axe, don't do this. You can also use, God forbid, be safe, and use a stick to keep your hand out of the way. Um, chunking out small, small pieces for kindling. Let's see here, get nice and set up. Not a lot of pressure is needed until you get to the thicker stuff. Okay, that's processing a bigger log. Let's go to smaller stuff. This style of splitting is popularized by uh, Ray Mears. It's, where you, it's a pretty accurate method where you take it, put it near the tip, and then pop straight downwards. You can see this is a piece from a fire. And then just snap it open like that. Fairly dry on the inside. Um, you can do it with a random piece of wood too, it's the same way. Uh, you may be able to be a little bit more accurate. Instead of going straight in the middle, I'll go over to the side and try and split off a piece after I clean off my chopping block. Okay. Here we go. And snap. Maybe continue it down here. There are times where you may have logs that aren't conducive to splitting. They may be too long and they might not want to stay up but there's many other ways of splitting, especially with the hatchet. We have a log here that has some crazy grain. Uh, I might be able to split this one. I'm gonna try and show you the maneuver first done correctly. So, this little method, popularized by Ray Mears, you stick it between your legs, behind your legs actually, and then you hit right down the middle, down the center, that way that way if it glances behind your legs it goes back behind you and you can split logs pretty darn easily this way we're getting small chunks right now just like that all right let's see if we can get this cantankerous one to split it's got crazy grain going on here Hey, kinda. Try and do the other end. Aim right through the middle. Cool. So that's one way. Another way, and this is my favorite, especially with the longer handled thing, a uh, longer handled hatchet is a golf method. Um, you have a wood pile such as this and everything's just hanging out on the ground. Um, it works best with like a splitting maul or even a boy's hatchet. Um, you put your back foot, the foot that's in back, if you're uh, this way, this foot's in back, be in front of it, not right here like this because that's going to be in the way of the arc and then just slap it just like that and it snaps stuff in half. You can walk around the whole wood pile and if you're lucky, you may not have to set any logs up. They might be just laying that way. Here's one, another golf split. Another golf split to make kindling. Maybe even more if you're real accurate. Logs that are up like this, you can hit towards the end here and get a split that way. Um, but you want to be careful not to jettison them everywhere. You can do that type of split. If you hang out right here and put it right here like this, not like that because that would create a fulcrum and then fling the piece of wood right in front of your face and then you'd pull a derp. All right, so put it all the way on the end there and work that split through. I didn't hit straight through the knot. There we go. Careful of that maneuver. I've got my thumb tucked back behind me so that I don't nick it. Uh, 
Uh, I just dropped that one there. I don't feel like going up and picking it up, so golf. There. I'm gonna switch over to this and just honk out that one. Now where this golf splitting style gets real cool is when you just have all these pieces of wood everywhere and you don't feel like setting them up to split more. Um, even though this is a shorter handled hatchet, I'm gonna try to be careful with it not to hit the ground. Cause this is my wetterlings, I like it. You see these marks, these are all inch marks where I can measure with, I've had this thing for a long time. Um, it's even better when you have a cheaper ax to do it with. Trying to make sure all my appendages are out of the way. Chunking stuff out. Sometimes you'll just get magical hits like that. You don't have you don't have to set anything up. That's split now, you can see. Split. Most of this splitting was done in a matter of a few minutes without setting up a specified chop block. With accuracy and being careful not to hit the ground, you can split stuff no problem very quickly. Golf swing for things randomly around the wood pile. Be sure to stay tuned for more Axe videos. You can send general questions to questions at EquippedToEndure.com. On the website right now, membership is free. You can get a premium membership and see special videos on there. If you have any more specific questions, they can go to Joe at EquippedToEndure.com. Also, stay tuned because we have more Axe videos coming up. Remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared.